How's it going everyone? Virtually Chris here. Today we're going to be building a self-driving car. That's right, we're going to be taking my 2017 Honda Civic with Honda Sensing and adding a self-driving element to it using the Kama Neo by Kama AI. The Kama Neo runs off of a OnePlus 3 smartphone as well as some individual components from other websites online. So as it stands now, I have every component I need to build this kit except for the 3D printed housing and the Kama Neo motherboard, which I bought from a user named Latimer on the Kama AI forums. Let's jump into the video. All right, guys, after weeks of waiting, the Kama Neo board is finally here. So I'm excited to open this package up and check it out. Well, I pretty much broke this box, but that's okay because here is the board. All right. That is sweet. It's in this plastic bag for safety, of course. Uh, we got the USB port. We got the ethernet. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. So we're heading down to Baxter Academy in Portland, Maine now. I'm going to go there to 3D print some stuff for this project. Uh, we need to 3D print the case to enclose the Kama Neo in, and it'll be a really fun thing to see everyone from my high school again. Along with that, we need to go there to solder the connector, the ethernet cable. Now that I think about it, I should have brought that connector, because uh, I have to solder that. Going to Baxter was a very awesome experience. I got to talk to some of the new students about what I was up to, as well as starting to 3D print with two different printers at the school. One of them in neon green and one of them in black. While the prints were going, I worked on soldering the connector, as well as getting some help from the students because I had never soldered before, but I ended up learning how to do it. It's pretty straightforward, thankfully. Uh, it is a little bit of a pain to solder this connector, but once you're done, you're done. Um, after that, we realized that one of the 3D printers had run out of filament, so I ended up uploading all the files to the other 3D printer that was printing in all black, and left it running over the weekend to pick up on Monday. So for now, we don't have a housing yet. This modification works by using the existing lane keep assist and radar adaptive cruise control systems and augmenting them with better software. So to access all these different elements of the car, there is a special connector hidden in the rear view mirror of my car where the existing camera is for the lane keep assist system. So it's all retaining clips. We just had to yank this cover off to get access to the connector. Just like any other Android based ROM, I flashed the OS onto my OnePlus 3, and after you boot up NeoS, it asks you to input a website where you input the OpenPilot installation for that to download. And OpenPilot is the software that runs all this self-driving technology. Now that I got that up and running, it's time to assemble the Neo. Alright, so in this is the heat sinks. That's important. All right, so we also have the fan here, which is gonna active, actively cool the unit. Wow, this fan is smaller than I thought. Um, somehow this little guy is gonna do the trick. Next, I placed the four heat sinks on the back of the phone and uh, realized that I didn't put enough pressure on them at first. Okay, so now that these are on, I'm gonna take it out. Oh! <laughs> Well, uh. but with all four heat sinks being on the phone and with the fan being taped down to the back of the phone, I was ready to give it a test. All right, so we have our janky connector here. We have the circuit board and we have the phone mounted down here. Uh, this probably isn't ideal, but we don't have the case 3D printed yet and we just want to test it out uh, before it overheats. So we're going to put it right here. Um, now that we've done that, we're going to take out the old lane keep assist and put ours in. After a lot of wiggling, we got that out. Now we're gonna plug in our connector that we made. Oh my God. <laughs> beautiful, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, um, I'm gonna grab the circuit board now. Theoretically plugging this in and then plugging the phone in. 
the system should be working. Oh god, wait, what? Oh. Oh my. These are backwards. So we just went to Walmart. We bought this. It cost like $20. <laughs> Look how small this is. Um, so hopefully this will plug in here. I hope. And then, oh, there it is. It's all wired up. I think. Are we gonna test it? We're gonna turn on the car. Oh, board found. Yes! Yes. So I'm just gonna back up. Oh my god, it works. This is incredible. It's working. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's let's test this maybe. You're not pressing the gas, right? No. Oh man, this is so crazy. Get your hands ready. Ah! That means it can't turn that far. Oh which yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. I guess I'm I'm kind of training it by like going a certain way. Let's see how this happens. That feels he pretty. He has smooth. no hands on the wheel. Oh wait. So let's see how it takes this turn. Right, that felt good. Is it gonna lose tracking here? If it's just like hugging, it, isn't it? It is really hugging, but it, it corrected. Okay. It it looks it, it I feel like it kind of looks like you're a really drunk driver because you're swerving back and forth. Yeah, and that's not what it's supposed to do. So we just got back from our first test drive. As you can see, we don't have the uh, heating system set up, so it did get pretty hot. But um. Right now some miles are pending, the phone is charging, it's probably a little bit hard to see that. Uh, but it is on Wi-Fi, which is good, and I guess it will continue charging off the car while the car's off. Um, here's our masterpiece, masterpiece cable, looking great. Um, but to be honest, uh, it, did, it did pretty well for the circumstances, the roads were pretty bad. Um, yeah, the roads were real bad, they weren't marked very well, and it was really pitch black nighttime. Um, plus the roads were bumpy, so this thing was like, like this isn't a very good mount, obviously. So, there's a lot of things that can be improved. Uh, we're waiting on the 3D printing to get completed. Uh, but overall, it's pretty cool. With the knowledge I have now, I know that the Neo wasn't yet calibrated correctly, which is why it was kind of left leaning and doing some weird stuff. But once I uploaded some of my data to the cloud, the calibration got much better and the Kama Neo is working fantastic now. After I got back from the first test drive, I wanted to relocate the Kama Neo to be closer to where it's supposed to be. And in doing so, my terrible soldering caught up to me and the cable broke. But since then, I have got a soldering iron and soldered it up way better and the cable is now perfectly sturdy for the future. The very next morning, I got an update on my Kama Neo to the 0.3 update, which made it much better at driving and overall a better UI. That about does it for episode one of the self-driving modification series. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. I know not many people have done this and it's kind of a unique thing and I'm loving it so far. So next episode, I'm gonna show you guys my progress on the housing. I'm gonna show you guys some test footage of it actually using it on highways and public roads. So stay tuned for that. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.